Well, welcome back to the bench. Today, I thought we'd take a look at this Fiat Electric 9.5 watt. So that's 800 lumens, 95 milliamps, soft white, 2700K color temperature. So the story behind this light bulb is that it just wouldn't come on from time to time. And then it was right above my sink vanity. It got where it finally wouldn't come on at all. So I just thought it'd be interesting to see uh, maybe what's going on with it and why it failed. This particular LED bulb is about three, three and a half years old. So to me, it still failed a little bit prematurely. I had issues with a few of these. So I mentioned in a video a while back that I had switched mine over to the Cree. And ever since about three years ago, I switched over and put all almost all Cree 60 watt uh, bulbs in. I hadn't had any issues with these. So I still have a couple spares here. Just for comparison, they're very similar. But um, but hadn't had any issues with the crease. And these are dimmable as well. So before we even tear into it and look inside, I just thought we'd look, uh, see if we have any impedance at all. And we show open, completely open. We'll switch it around in case it's a diode or anything. We have absolutely no load. So just to compare with a new Cree, I would expect at least getting to the mega ohms or so. Yeah, two megs. We got a capacitor there. Two megs and rising. So yeah, definitely a little bit of difference. I don't think I'm gonna take time with a spudger to go around and, and take it apart. I think I'm just gonna get right into it if I can. I'm sure this is glued on there. And that's what we have inside of this one. I don't see any black spots or dark spots inside of the LED themselves. Just fold it around there to get this 120 volts in. And there we go. So after wiping that chip with a little bit of alcohol, we can see a number 1696-30A. We also have a 1637UG, but I can't find anything on this chip. One thing that's kind of interesting about this chip, if we can see here, we don't use pins one and two at all. I even pushed that pin one there to show that it's just sitting on the pad. It's not attached to anything. So just pins three and four, five, six, and I guess that would be pin eight. I could find the seven pin LED driver type chip, but uh, none with the same configuration. So that chip's still a bit of a mystery there. I checked the bridge rectifier and it, it checks out. I can actually bring over this little cheap quick checker and um, show you that I, I just went across the resistors there around 22 ohm resistors and they're good this will do resistance capacitance and diodes so if i go across we have a diode there diode there so i believe i believe everything's good with the bridge
this um, electrolytic capacitor. You can tell it has gotten warm because the heat shrink is split off. At least I believe that's what we're seeing there because this is your heat sink and it's just pushed. So a lot of your heat is all around that electrolytic, which as we know is a terrible, terrible idea, which may be the reason these fail out there a period of time. So we're getting about 194 microfarad just in circuit there. And so if we bring over the ESR meter, check the ESR of this cap since this is going to be a switch mode power supply here this looks like a little buck converter basically and we're getting about 0.21 which it even says is good if your capacitance is less than 470 microfarad and for around 25 volts and this is a 220 uh, microfarad. I bit pretty good there. Take this loose. This is a 63 volt at 220 microfarad. So even with this little chart at 63 volts, getting up to about 220, we should be about 0.16. So it's borderline. I mean, it's, it's a little bit high in ESR, so... At high frequency, it could start showing a problem, but for right now, I think it's fine. I don't, I don't think that's causing an issue unless it's getting worse as it heats up or something like that. But we have a transistor here. If I go to diode check, I go positive to pin two. We change this around. Negative pin two. There's our diode or pin junction and pin junction. So the little transistor is good. I don't see any other component that reads out of spec. We have an inductor, some capacitors, the transistor, and a loose wire. <laughs> that may have been the culprit. I wonder if you can see that. Look how dark that end is. I believe that was a cold solder joint there. I honestly, I don't know if you could if you could see it in the video before when I was showing that. So that actually broke off. And since I did disassemble it, maybe I did put some extra stress on that. But that is, uh, it is odd how dark the end of that wire is. Unless just being up against that resistor caused that. Very interesting, because I did just pull that loose, so that might be on me there. I wasn't even trying to be easy with the wires, but I didn't notice that that was warm. One thing I'll do is I'll, I'll verify that the, the LED array does work. This is going to be 14 different LEDs there in series, so... I believe close to 60 volts will fire it. May not be full brightness, but that's fine. We don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to bring over this Ego 56 volt battery and we'll see if the, um, it's going to charge this cap up as well, of course, but that's one reason I know the polarity as well. If you're wondering, uh, going by the polarity, white's going to negative on the cap. So I know that white is my negative. Yep. Cap charged up and bam, there we go. So that, make sure those don't touch. That gives me some idea since that is around 60 volts, give or take. Not current limited, but under volting, so it, the current did not get too high per LED. So that's got me wondering this whole time that I have a bad wire connection. One way to find out. So I'm just going to go ahead and solder this wire back on just temporarily. Um, I mean, just for testing, I don't, I don't care to ever use this again, of course. I'm just going to go ahead and do this so it's easier to hook back up to 120 volts for, uh, for testing out here. So if I bring over 120 volts, protected by the uh, 13 amp fuse here on the quick test,
And we be very, very careful here not to touch anything. Will this thing fire off for us here? Yes, it does. So either we just had a bad connection elsewhere or we had a bad connection here. Now, if you ever are dealing with mains voltage, you're doing so at your own risk and, um, you know, always take care and take safety precautions. If you're not comfortable or qualified to work with mains voltage and just don't do it, it's just that simple. But yeah, I think we just had a bad connection there. I really do. So one thing I don't think I end up showing on video was after we saw this wire on and it worked. I did test this, but I don't believe I showed it. I am showing my one to two meg ohm. So there is showing some impedance there where I believe I showed on the first of the video, it showed completely open. So that does kind of verify that we must've had a bad connection. And even though I think I caused uh, that wire falling off eventually, I'll try to have a, a steel frame shot of it up here. If you remember when I took this apart, that was just folded. So I just wonder if, um, if the neutral actually wasn't making a good contact on the actual base, the way they just folded it. So looking back, that could have been our loose connection, the way they done that and the way it would work sometimes, sometimes it wouldn't. So anyway, just a thought. So even though I, I definitely won't use this light bulb again, it was giving issues to start with. And I'm not real happy about how warm those caps are getting and that could be some of our issue as well but i think that's long enough on this video hopefully you found this a little bit interesting um, it's just something i wanted to look at and investigate and see uh, see why it was giving me a failure i think prematurely no more age than it had on it and i definitely see possibly a use for this at 60 volts or so since many of you know i'm a big ego battery fan repaired several of them of course and use a lot of ego equipment. I do enjoy using the batteries for other things. And since this little um, LED array, I work at about 60 volts, that'll work out, I think, pretty well. So just in case you find it interesting here, with a little boost regulator with 30 volts in, we can uh, come up slow and see uh, at what point an LED start firing. Cut the light off here. We can see that a few of them are starting to fire at about 46 volts. 48 volts, you see more of them coming up. At 50 volts, they're all pretty visible. It takes around 52 volts to get some pretty usable light out of it. And then where our battery was at earlier, 56 volts. Sorry, let me shine this away from the camera. That's right at 56 volts there. Fully charged on an ego battery is going to be probably about 58, close to 58 volts. That's going to be pretty close to our max output. I think 60 volts. Yeah, so we're 200 milliamps. That's probably probably as far as you want to go. And not overdrive the LEDs. So even if you didn't want to make a nice little work light or something out of this module, since it does work well off the 56 volt uh, batteries, we could easily make, just say a little emergency, uh, emergency light that'll last for a very long time. And you can make this a real quick and easy emergency light just having the drawer if you need it right so come in handy with some bigger batteries like this drop the exposure down some here so hope you uh, liked the video if you did please like share subscribe thanks for watching and god bless